Hello! It's been a while since I made the last video. The last video was about the um, seed GRO BLE module with the NIF52840 chip, um, but was just the basics. Got a lot of questions and we will continue it here. But first I want to give you the reason why um, I had, why I were busy, because I was writing also a book about um, WSN um, so about wireless sensor network at all, the basics, uh, the modulation techniques, electromagnetic waves, how is the range and so on, how does this all work and what is the security, the use cases and then also of course about all the protocols like Thread, Meta, BLE, BLA Mesh, uh, NOcean, CoAP, MQTT, uh, LoRa and LoRaWAN and so on. So if you want to get an overview about this topic, I think this is a nice starting point for you. Yeah, it's not too deep, but it's deep enough that you get an understanding there. So there's also something about sensors, the measurement chain, the interfaces, and um, also then at the end, of course, what technique you can use for uh, uh, analyze the data um, and so on. Unfortunately, it's just available in German at the moment. I'm still planning to translate it. And if I find some, some native speaker or proof uh, reading it, then I will also publish it in English. So you get it over Amazon. So this was the introduction to my new book. Um, and now we're coming back to the seed um, GRO BLE module. And you see here, I have always already connected on the downer side here, um, power connector. Yeah? There you can connect a lithium polymer battery. Yeah? And I solder it here and I also solder the pins. And like you see, when I, I have here a lithium polymer battery and 650 mAh. Uh, MAH and um, so when we connect it, you see already set the LED is lightning here, um, blinking. So I make already a program. So it's quite nice. Uh, you can charge it with the USB cable, the battery and so on. But I didn't make any further tests yet how long this uh, battery will uh, stay here later. Uh, I already programmed with thread network and so on. But we go into this later a little bit deeper. So how we can now control a GPIO pin? Yeah, um, you're seeing here our pins. Yeah, We have a few which we can use. We are using now the D3 or the P029. So this means on GPI port uh, 0, uh, number 29. Uh, you can use, of course, all other ones, but you have to be careful. Yeah, you have to check in the device tree. Like when you're using the um, RX and TX and the SDA and SDR, um, when there is I square C1 is activated and so on, then you would have to deactivate it first. If not, the port will not be uh, accessible. Yeah, so. First, we can look, of course, you're seeing here, GPIO port 0 is um, in the device tree. Also, you can use as starting the Blinky example, yeah, make uh, a build configuration, but um, be sure you are choosing a build here for the GRO BLE board, yeah. And then you're having here the device tree with GPIO 0 here. Um, and uh, when we go in the application, we don't def define now in the device tree an LED. We are using the GPIO port. You're seeing here GPIO port 0 for the LED, 29. We are defining as macro and we're getting the device, the GPIO 0 device with over the node label. Yeah, you're seeing the node label GPIO 0. And um, then we are getting the device installed here. Afterwards, we are just setting it as output, and in a while sleep, we are setting it to 1 and 0. Yeah, we have just to compile it, to build it. And uh, when the build is done, 
we are just going in the directory build save file and there we're having so uf2 now of course we have to uh, push again the buttons yeah don't forget it's a small button here to go in the bootloader mode two times a little bit difficult sometimes then especially after i sold us a pin here it's not so easy to connect and then i go on uh, folder g and just paste it here and you're seeing directly here the led is lightning yeah i connect the led actually i should show you forgot to show you the uh, connection yeah you see here with the ground yeah, um, to the led and then with the resistor to uh, the what port was it before the 29 p029 yeah so just a normal connection and we're just making it on and off so it's actually quite easy with the seat CRO. and now since we're having a um, blinking led uh, we can also um, disconnect the usb port and check it if our battery is working which is charged a little bit already so just put it in and you see here the light bulb also working without any usb connection so it's quite nice and charging of course just connect it again so. and the next important thing is of course how we are using a serial port how we print something out and this is with this device also quite easy we're just making print k hello world i mean we have already a print k here activated and in the device tree is also already the virtual uh, UART here activated yeah so we don't have to do something actually we if we don't want it we have actually to de deactivate it yeah if we want to save a little bit more power then just compile it Go to the folder again. Going in the bootloader modus. And copy it into the device. And we're going now to putty. My device is on COM port 7. Uh, just open it and you see I have here the output Hello World and also still the blinking LED with it. Yeah, when you see it uh, parallel. Yeah, so everything is working also. Another question which I got is how to connect something over UART. And we're having here the UART pins, the TX pin and the RX pin. And I want to connect a um, UART USB bridge with an FTDE um, chip here as UART bridge. So I connect the RXD with the TXD on the seat, on the GRO board, and also the TXD with the RXD. <coughs> Then I always connect the ground for safety. Yeah, it works also without, but better to connecting the grounds. <coughs> then as starting point, we're taking the LED example from the last time. I'll just make a copy. <coughs> Call it print UART. Then delete the build, add it in our Visual Studio, and directly making 
a build yeah that's the right here oh board here so build and start so the so first thing what we can check is um, if the UART zero is enabled yeah we are going in the device tree file and we're seeing here the UART I make it a little bit bigger so the so UART zero yeah. so I said you can read it a little bit better <coughs> And it's okay, yeah. baud rate is also here. The pins, uh, which we saw already, yeah. so GPIO port 1, 11, and GPIO port 1, 12. Yeah. So this is activated. The next thing what we have to do is to configure the, the files that the modules are loaded. And for this, I have to activate first that we want to have the uh, asynchronous mode config. Um, what sync up here to yes um, then the first time here I was struggling a little bit because we have to activate of course you add uh, zero uh, also so I think but we also need to disable the event mode what? If not we getting as an interrupt driven mode, if not we getting an error here. Yeah? So this is a configuration file, then we can go to the application, so it's the main. Here of course we don't want to activate the LED anymore, so we just delete it. Uh, so KSleep is still used and we are still making the print out over <coughs> The console is a normal one, so print hello. But in the next step, I configure our UART device. Yeah. So here, get the device UART dev from the node label UART0. Yeah. Take a look back to the, to the device tree. Yeah. UART0 is here the label. <coughs> so then I make a buffer variable for a counter variable, which I uh, uh, use here for printing out and uh, length variable. And in the next step, I'm checking if the device is ready. <coughs> so the UART device. And then we directly can print out something. So I'm using here the sprint function to store the counter variable here. <coughs> it's the easy solution, of course, I have them to implement also the standard IO header file. I can use this function. And uh, also I use need, of course, the header file from the UART. Uh, yeah, then I add one to the counter and this is it. So I make a build. And when the build is finished, you see here my board, which I connected here. Yeah? Um, so it's an another mod here from the UART bridge, but it's also the FTDI um, 232 chip here. So it's similar. And of course we have to go in the bootloader mode again. And go in the directory from our build. Copying the UF2 file. And copy it to our device here. Then I'm starting putty. Port 7, we see still our hello world. Yes, this is our virtual device. And when I go to port 6, I have my FTD UART bridge. 
and you're seeing here a counter variable which going here. Yeah? We can also have a look in the device manager that you're seeing here. This is our virtual device and this is the FTDI bridge. Um, so now you saw how you can uh, control the GPIO ports, how you can print out something over the a CDC driver and the cape print function and also how to control the UART0 interface. We will make a break here and in the next part then I have the plan to show you how to using the E2C bus, um, how to read out uh, the MCP um, temperature sensor and transfer something over thread to uh, another device. So, see you in the next video.